Hey guys and welcome to another video. Today we're working once again with the NVIDIA GeForce GDX 285 in SLI. We used an AM3 Plus system based around a Gigabyte mainboard with the 990FX chipset which has a SLI license and the CPU we used is the AMD FX 6300. We had some fast dual channel memory and SLI worked fine. We saw decent performance, but I got a lot of comments that this CPU doesn't quite show what these video cards can do and that I should get something better. So I had a look on eBay Australia and found this mainboard listed. It is the Asus Sabertooth Z77 and it came completely boxed with all the accessories. And here it is, and it is a beautifully looking motherboard. So let's take a closer look. So we have a nice range of PCI Express slots, and because we're using SLI, they will run at PCI Express 2.0 speed with 8X lanes. We have eight SATA ports and a USB 3 front panel header. At the back, we have four USB 2, there are four USB 3, eSATA, we have optical audio out, HDMI, display port, gigabit ethernet and also audio out. The processor we're using is the Intel Core i5-3570 and this one is locked but on a Z series chipset we can uh, increase the ratio of the multiplier so I set it to 42 and in games I saw a clock speed of 4 maybe 4.1 gigahertz sometimes even hitting 4.2. We're using 16 gigabytes of RAM configured in dual channel. It has a XMP profile that you can activate in the BIOS. So it runs at 1600 megahertz with 99924 timings. In the box was also a SLI bridge. So I used this one and yeah, I had no issues. SLI worked straight out of the box. And now back to the GDX 285. This is still a very fast video card with 240 shaders. We have a 512-bit memory interface and many of you mentioned that this is actually a highlight. Uh, not many cards have such a wide memory bus. With one gigabytes of video memory, the memory throughput is a massive 159 gigabytes per second. Such a SLI system is not power efficient. Just sitting idle on the desktop, 111 watts for the entire system. But when you run a game, I saw up to 430 watts when playing Crisis. These two cards produce quite a bit of heat and noise. In winter, this might be comfortable, but here in Australia, we have over 40 degrees. We have summer now. Now, let's take a listen. I recorded the fan noise. For storage, we're using this Kingspec SSD. I bought this a while ago. It's got a capacity of 960 gigabytes. And I don't use this for modern projects, but for retro projects, this is perfectly fine. Lots of space for games. And the read performance especially is not too bad. I'm using Windows 7 64-bit. We are connected to the NAS, but on the second Ethernet port with a dedicated router. No internet access. It is totally isolated from the modern network. And this just lets me conveniently install uh, benchmarks and games. All my games today are from GOG. And here we have some results for 3D Mark 06. And we can see that the i5 is much stronger than the FX 6300. So yes, you were right. The FX 6300 can hold back these video cards in certain games. And now we can see the difference in these benchmarks. But I could also see the difference in games, which we will be checking out now. So the first game we have here is Far Cry 2, 1080p. I maxed out all the details. I believe it's got an ultra details preset, DirectX 10, of course. We're getting around 100 FPS and SLI is being utilized really well. In general, I must say, apart from one game, SLI was working really well. Bioshock is next, 1080p, with all the details cranked up and look at that, over 200 FPS, so silky smooth on this machine. 
The next game we have is Dead Space. 1080p, again, all the details are maxed out. SLI is being utilized quite well and we're getting around 200 FPS. In the last video we tried Fallout 3 and I got frustrated, I wasn't able to leave the bunker and uh, indoors the performance was really good but it didn't really show, it, it wasn't representative of the real game. So you guys recommended to test Fallout New Vegas and yep, the uh, introduction sequence is a lot shorter. Here we are outside, this is with the ultra details preset and I believe 2x anti-aliasing as well and 16x anisotropic filtering and we're getting over 60 fps so these two video cards are doing pretty well in this game. I tried a game that's a little bit more modern this is Alan Wake at 1080p and I believe the details are set to high and yeah here we are GPU limited they're sitting at around 99% usage in some cases and the heat they're pumping out is pretty intense actually um, and you can also see the CPU load is quite low we're getting around 60F but it does dip below so this is a game where we can start uh, seeing our video cards uh, beginning to struggle a little bit. The next game we have is Hitman Absolution high quality details and decent performance. We can also see that this game uses physics. And here we have Wolfenstein New Order 1080p. I believe this is with high details and it does not use SLI. So uh, the latest drivers, maybe they don't have a profile for this game. If you know a little bit more, let me know. Uh, this game uses OpenGL but other games use OpenGL and I don't think uh, that means SLI is not working, it might be just this game. The performance is quite demanding, uh, I found that you might have to lower the details to low or medium to get decent performance in this game. But does it run Crisis? And the answer is yes. So this is the original Crisis, not the remastered version, we're running uh, the high details and I found the high details to work much better than the very high details. We are pretty much over 60 FPS most of the time, even in the some more demanding areas. And I also tried Crisis Warhead with the gamer preset at 1080p and this one also runs pretty well. So as long as you don't set the details to very high, yes, this system can run Crisis. So guys, there you have it, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 285 in SLI revisited with a faster processor. In 3D Mark 06 we clearly could see the difference, the i5 is much stronger than the FX6300, not just in benchmarks but also in games I saw uh, quite a better performance across the board. This main port was not very cheap but I think this is a good investment for the channel, it lets us play around with more SLI setups as well as testing operating systems all the way from Windows XP to Windows 10. I didn't do any massive overclocking even with a locked CPU you can raise the CPU multiplier and we saw a clock speed between 4 and 4.2 gigahertz and if you have some decent RAM make sure you activate the XMP profile otherwise you're not getting the full performance. After Steam stopped supporting Windows XP and Windows Vista users I kind of gave up on that and I stopped buying games on Steam and yeah GOG is now my platform that I go to. All the installers are stored on my NAS. Someone wrote a Python script that can download your entire library. I believe it's almost two terabytes. I've got over 1000 games from GOG and it really has made my life a lot easier. I don't need to go online, install GOG Galaxy or Steam or anything like that. Just double click on the installers and I can play shortly afterwards. So yeah, if you had two of these cards in SLI with a decent platform, you could play for a very, very long time. The performance is decent even in more modern games. In terms of heat and noise, yep, these uh, video cards definitely generate some heat, which is nice in winter and the fan noise can also be quite loud. I have not uh, replaced the thermal paste, that might make a difference. One of these two cards is always a little bit hotter, so maybe that card needs a little bit of care. And that brings us to the end of the video. So what do you think about these video cards, the faster platform and SLI in general? 
Also, guys, let me know what do you want to see in future videos. Uh, I always listen to your comments. I read every single one of them. You might not get a reply every time, but I do read every comment and I think I think a lot about what videos I want to do in the future. And as always, if you found it interesting, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, share the video with your friends, leave a comment, and I shall see you soon with another one.